and welcome to the AV Forums Movies Podcast, streaming live on the 4th of August 2021. It's a podcast where we usually attempt to discuss the best and worst movies and TV shows from an AV perspective, but inevitably get sidetracked along the way. Joining me this evening is Simon Crust. Hello, Internet Land. And introducing our new reviewer, Mark Costello. Evening all. What a pleasure it is to have you here, Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Tom. Uh, pleasure to be here. Good. I mean, you're going to be fast introduced to what a uh, consummately professional podcast this is. So, the operation. Absolutely. We are. Sweat. <laughs> um, yeah. So you've just started reviewing for us mark um it's pretty grueling right watching films that you're going to watch anyway and writing things that you're going to post anyway on the forums it, it, it it's a tough gig but you know i'm here to serve so what things do we need to know about you as a human being oh uh well as you can see i'm a middle-aged white dude in glasses sat in front of a row of films talking about movies on the internet Insert your own thoughts here about what that means about me. <laughs> yeah, there are. There just aren't enough of us around, <laughs> frankly. We're a dying breed, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Instantly cancelled. Um, before we continue, thank you very much for that, Mark. Before we continue, uh, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of all the amazing competitions that we have going on on the website currently please head over to avforums.com forward slash competitions. You'll be able to enter such amazing for such amazing prizes as uh, August's Criterion titles on Blu-ray, Promising Young Woman on Blu-ray, Antebellum, um, the Special Collector's Edition of The Babadook, all sorts of stuff going on there. Um, and if you stay tuned to this podcast, then there will be a podcast-exclusive competition at the end where you'll be able to win a copy of Toy Story 3 in 4K, um, which is actually a, a pretty decent prize. So definitely stick around, if only for the prize. Uh, you can head over, as I said, to avforums.com slash competitions to enter, and they are open to anybody who is a member resident in the UK, basically. Uh, now, before we go on, um, we are going to be talking about those occasions where canny marketing gurus spend a few months coming up with a new toy line, followed by a few days coming up with an idea for a TV show or a movie to sell those new toys. Uh, is this a cynical marketing ploy? Yes. Is it a net benefit to the world? No. But speaking for myself, it is responsible for a lot of my formative tv experiences and some vhs favorites and probably some of yours too what um what figurine collections did you have as a as a child simon that were uh, that were media linked um i'm not sure that i can recall having stuff that was uh, first before the film i've got i had plenty of merchandising that came out subsequent to the film being released. Mm -hmm. The big one, of, of course, being Star Wars. Um, I had all that stuff, loads and loads of it. Um, but I don't recall, because when I was growing up, to, um, TV shows and films were, were somewhat different. And I, I'm racking my brain back to, crikey, uh, 1970, was a long time ago. <laughs> 19, uh, 1982. Uh, no, oh, 75, 74, when I was a kid, and that would have been my uh, formative years, um, uh, watching tellies that you had to wait to warm up, you know. Um, I, I can't think of anything that I had. It was a toy that was, first. That was a toy first, yeah. and it was subsequently made into a film. Um, okay. I mean, I could speak about Action Man, but they, they came much, much later. Um and they were animated films that came much later. Um, yeah, there was a TV show and mm. some animated films for Action Man, right? I seem to remember that vaguely. But I, I wouldn't have seen them. I mean, no. I, I only know they exist because of the research I've done for the podcast. <laughs> um, 
You do did research? Actually, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I had to look up my old reviews. <laughs> <laughs> I had to remember what I thought about stuff. Yeah. What about you, Mark? Any any particular toy favourites from when you were a kid? Well, to continue the theme of me being a walking, talking cliche, it was the, the big toys were all the usual stuff. It was your Star Wars. It was your Action Force. It was your He-Man. It was your Transformers. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, like everyone, we've all got that story of, you know, we might not remember where we were when JFK got shot. We may not remember where we were when other horrifically violent and terrible world events happened. But we all know where we were when we got that call, when our mother had given away our Star Wars toys. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all had it, and it's etched in our memory. So, uh, so, so, yeah, that, that, that was me. So I wasn't an action man. I wasn't an action man kind of person. It, 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 was, it was the littler figures for me, the ones that I could mm. very easily lose and uh, instantly go and rebuy the week after because I'm a good little capitalist or uh, pawn. Yeah, I I never had an action man either. I mean, um, I don't really know why. I just never did. But I, like you guys, I I had I had the gamut of all the usual stuff. Um, one thing that neither of you guys mentioned yet was Mask, which was a huge like. Oh, I was I was a big fan of Mask when I was a kid, and I had a bunch of those toys. And I'm. I'm not going to swear I've my heard life. of PJ Mask. I don't know what no. I was, was going to say. You say Mask, I think of Eric Stoltz. <laughs> you know, M A S K. Yeah, Mobile Armored Strike Command with a K, I believe. Um, yeah, mm. I, I'm pretty sure those were toys before before it was a TV show. I'm not going to stake my life oh, on look. it. Cam has <laughs> given you the the answer there. Mobile Armored Strike Command, spelled with a K, exactly right. Ah, uh, see. There's there's life in here, yeah. Um, so, as you can probably guess from our, our conversations so far, we're going to be talking today about toys that have successfully graduated into movies and TV shows. Um, and we will, but before we get into that, that's going to be our feature presentation any second. Let's just take a couple of minutes to talk about what we have been watching this week. Um, Mark, what have you seen this week that is particularly Tickle to your fancy. Ooh, uh, well, I saw the Suicide Squad, mm. uh, which was was pretty good, man. You with the bar set so low from the first one, it, it, it couldn't help but be an improvement. It's so a stinker. Pretty, yeah. Uh, all, other than that, I've uh, make, been making my way through uh, next month's Blu-rays that have been sent to me for the uh, second of our monthly roundup. Wow, that's quite exciting. Your um, monthly roundup has been very well received on the forums, I have to say. Oh, excellent. Good. Good. People, well, please. people are really chuffed to have this uh, a service. If you don't know, Mark has been watching maybe even more movies than Kaz and re reviewing. It's an incredible feat. <laughs> it really is to to let us know which are the best and worst Blu-ray releases, Blu releases for the month. That's up on the website at the moment. So go and have a look at that. And um, yeah, I think that's going to become a valuable service. I really do. Yes, Tom, I hope so. I hope so. And plus, it means I get to legitimately watch movies. And, and the next time the family nag at me, I can say, it's for my job. <laughs> I've got to work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, Sai? Have you seen anything good? Um, I just finished the um, Netflix series, came out what, a couple of months ago now, Shadow and Bone. Okay. Um, which um, I, I quite enjoyed, actually. Um, it's, uh, I think when, when we spoke about it a couple of podcasts ago, mm -hmm. um, we kind of guessed what it was going to be about, and we weren't far wrong, actually. Um, it's, uh, it's crossed two, two books um, from the, the guy who wrote it. Um, I, I did quite enjoy it. It, uh, it seemed a little bit rushed in places. It was set like eight episodes, and they're about uh, roughly an hour long. But even in places, I felt it seemed a little bit rushed, as if they wanted to get to some action before they introduced the characters and their backstories, you know? Um, I, I, I mean, I kept, in my brain, I kept referring back to Game of Thrones and how well that was structured in its initial series and how well that developed throughout its 10 episodes. This one just seemed a bit, he's, we've got this thing, let's throw it at the screen and get it out there and people will love it. <laughs> 
that's funny because that was kind of the opposite problem that we had with stuff like the Hunger Games, which just felt stretched mm, yeah. out. Yeah. But with a sh- like overall, probably a shorter runtime than eight hours. Oh, no, no, no. For the four movies, I guess not. Maybe not. But even so, like that was that was four movies and felt too long yeah. over the last yeah. two. Um, so it's interesting that you say like it just feels rushed. So it is. Yeah, there, there okay. were situations developing, and I thought, hang on a minute, they didn't really develop that very well. You know, this the the, the chemistry between two particular characters. You're thinking, hang on a minute, they've only known each other five minutes. How come they're all getting on, getting it on together? What's going on? You know, it just <laughs> sometimes real life side. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it only takes five minutes. I mean, <laughs> well, a few youngsters maybe. <laughs> Not really a badge of it's not really a badge of honor, is it, to say that it only takes five minutes? Moving on, <laughs> moving on, yeah. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> uh, so we we shall move on. We shall move on immediately after I address the fact that yes, Jungle Cruise is not a very good movie. Sorry, everyone. So this week we spent an unhealthy amount of time revisiting our childhoods in an attempt to answer the question. Has there ever been a good movie based on a toy? And we are going to discuss that now in our feature presentation. If you enjoy the podcast on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. If you're listening to the audio version, then please leave us a rating on your podcast app. We invite you to email questions and feedback to podcast at avforums.com and join in with this episode's discussion thread in the podcasts forum at avforums. So I just promised that we'd talk about toys and movies. But before we do that, I do want to say a big thank you to our new donors, our new patrons, um, Big Ben Chunk and Nick S. Thanks ever so much for becoming patrons of AVF. Um, If you're not one, become one. You get loads of cool perks like uh, inside info on what we're going to be talking about on this show and uh, money off merch and all sorts of stuff. It's well worth it. And it's only three pounds a month. So head over to patreon.com forward slash AV forums and um, join up. So what we're going to do is we've each been delving into our sort of like childhood and the the toys that we liked, but more importantly, the films that we liked that were based on those toys. And we've each come to the podcast with a choice. And I think we sort of know what we're each going to say, but it's going to be interesting to find out. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's start off with the new guy. Let's start off with uh, with you, Mark. Which which m- toy based movie have you chosen, and why? Well, I suppose first of all we have to think about the definition of toy, because uh, obviously, for, you know, we we kicked around. Are we including video games in this? But we came to a discussion that it was going to be toys and board games, and board games is where the right answer for this question lies. Because there is only one decent film that has been made that started life as a toy. And the answer is Jonathan Lynn's 1985 classic, Clue. Shout out to Gavin Hanley in the thread, who did get the right answer. Uh, (laughs) But but yeah, I mean, you might argue that it's a cheat. I mean, as a toy or a game, it has an inbuilt narrative. You know, it's a murder mystery. And the film, you know, does a really good job of, of, of... following that plot really well but it's got this it's got this mad frenetic insanity to it which kind of balances almost goofy slapstick prat falling you've got a little bit of the uh, uh, the saucy 70s nudge nudge wink wink humor there uh, kudos to michael mckean's greatest ever final line in a movie i'm going home to sleep with my wife <laughs> uh, and 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 I think it, it it does a really good job of bolting a narrative to something that doesn't really have a narrative. But as you're watching it, you've got the feeling that you had while you were playing the game. I mean, it helps when you pack the cast full of those you know comedy geniuses. You've got Tim Curry, who I think quite frankly runs more in that film than Tom Cruise has run in all his films put together. <laughs> you know, you've got Christopher Lloyd, you've got Michael McKean, you've got Madeline Kahn. Leslie Ann Warren, you know, a whole host of these great comedic actors and actresses. And of course, it's written by John Landis, who knows a thing or two about about humour. And, you know, plus, of course, it's infamous for its 
Scooby Doo type multiple endings, which thankfully, you know, we haven't had to deal with the roulette wheel of which one we're going to get since it's been released on. Yeah, uh, that's true. We can get all three, you know, yeah. but, but it, it's, it's, it's meta, it's clever, it's funny. Uh, and yeah, I just think it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It is an amazing movie. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, and I'd forgotten that Michael McKean was in it as well. And uh, it's just nuts, isn't it? I I remember, I think I've seen it maybe three or four times, and every single time, it is laugh out loud funny. It, it totally. is a brilliant movie. Totally. Uh, well, it, it could have been It could have been more amusing. We could have had Carrie, Carrie Fisher was originally cast in it. So the role of Leslie Ann Warren was Carrie Fisher's, and she went to rehab, I think, about three days before filming started. They mm. wouldn't let her out of rehab. So they cast Leslie Ann Warren with, like, two days to go. So uh, could have been even more interesting, I think. That's nuts. I can't believe that. Can you imagine an alternate universe where we had all those people in, in that movie? That's amazing. It's, it's one of Tim Curry's best performances as well. Completely. I mean, he's, uh, he's, he has uh, so many to choose from, but his... Um, the way he does uptight is peerless, I think. Um, and is he repeats it, well, or a similar sort of thing in um, Home Alone 2. He plays almost exactly yeah. the same character as the, the concierge. And uh, it's, the, it's the part he was born to play, baby. He was... Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, but then you get darkness in legend and you go, is that it. even the same person? Yeah. Well, Curry, legend. Absolutely. And he is, he's still going. He still does mm. um, voiceover work for um, a few different kids shows. The last I heard him, I say I heard him because I, I watched the um, Transformers Rescue Bots with a child, I should say. <laughs> I didn't, not for my, but he was one of the bad guys in it. And it was really pleasing to see him and hear him still working because he's, um, he's not a very well man, unfortunately. Um, he, he suffered, a, a, I, I believe, multiple strokes not so long ago, um, and he's been sort of in recovery ever since. But his, it seems to not have affected his voiceover work too much. Thanks. Good call, Mark. That's amazing. Well, um, you can give up and go home now. <laughs> Stop Look done. at that. We finished 45 minutes <laughs> early. This is amazing. I'm giving you the gift of time. <laughs> Uh, board games board games was bending it a bit we did say no video games because boy oh boy that is a separate topic so do I. that is its own thing and uh, we have not got time to go into it tonight maybe another time though um well what about you Sai? what was your choice okay so so i i too uh i picked a board game as well um and it's um the uh, the 1996 fantastic film with Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt based on a, on on the war game, which is fantastic. When you when you're um, um, an a, an adolescent, you're a teenager, going up. This is the best game to play. I'm, ta I'm talking about Twister, of course. It's a fantastic game. Oh my god! <laughs> no, does that not count? <laughs> Boy, oh boy, that is not how I play Twister. I mean, I, I don't play it. If I do. Was that cow playing it? You know, the one that's got... <laughs> All right, okay. No, so... Um... We can't include Twister. Um, we can't. What I, what I, um, I, on, on, my, um, on my preamble, I, um, I picked... Uh, Transformers. Um, the reason I picked that, um, I was a little bit too old uh, to be watching it as a child if, um, when it came on to um, when the toys came out. Um, but my boys, both my boys, Ben and Luke, they um, they were at roughly the right sort of age. So I had loads of this stuff around at the time. Um, and uh, I'm going to go on rather than the, the TV shows, the cartoons and stuff. I'm going to talk about the, the Michael Bay uh, initial film. Um, because the rest of them are, are totally crap and not worth mentioning. <laughs> but the initial film, the first one, um, and the reason I picked it re was because I reviewed this for the site in 2007 on HD DVD. You remember what that was? What? Yeah. HD, the best format. HD DVD. Do you remember what that was? The best in HD the dim format. and distant past? It's that one that was backed by not that, Sony. That, yes, that, that's <laughs> exactly the one. Um, it was 
it was a Paramount and DreamWorks disc. Um, it was supposed to be one of their premiere um, releases and one that was, um, you know, touted as being the saviour of HD DVD. Because, but even at that time in 2007, it was starting to decline because Sony had the, you know, two of the studios at the time. Um, and I, uh, you can't see it on the site anymore, obviously, because HD DVD doesn't exist. But I did dig out my old review. Um, and I had a little read through it, and it's quite enlightening how how different I used to write back then in crayon, um, and how similar and how similar the films are. Um, um, I'm, I'm tempted to just to, to read a little bit of this because it's it's quite um, come on, it's quite entertaining. Episode. I find it we've, quite entertaining. We've got time. We we we've got loads of time. Yeah, yeah. Loads of time. Go for there it. There is a um, there is a vast cast of characters, both new and old. Um, most manage to occur themselves quite well, even though the script doesn't call for much depth. Uriah LaBeef, um, as Sam, carries most of the film. He plays a sort of Ferris Bueller-type character, desperate to sell his family heirlooms, but with enough chat to talk around a teacher into giving him extra credit for a paper, in brackets, a fantasy in itself. <laughs> he is likable enough and takes all pretty much in his stride, rising to the gratefulness thrust upon him, not so much for the glory, but for the girl. Hey, the girl in question is Michaela, played by the delicious Mac <laughs> Megan Fox. Oh, oh, man. Oh, no. Cancel. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they share a brief but likable chemistry, and their hookup is not unexpected. Their face, yeah. their, what's, uh, they, 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 let's go on a little bit. Um, special mention <laughs> to Peter Cullen, who voiced the veteran of, the, of, the, uh, of Optimus Prime on the TV show. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, quite he, entertaining. He did a solid um, job uh, when he came yeah. back as Optimus. He he yeah. did. I, I'm not I'm not a Transformers guy, and even as a kid, I wasn't really a Transformers kid. But there is a certain delight in seeing some of that stuff realised in yeah. in the first movie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I go on and hear about a little bit about the um the the, the effects and how good the CGI was, and that they seem to have weight and position in the frame, and, and for all intents and purposes, they're actually physically there. When Prime and, and Megatron crash into each other, you can feel the clash of the metal against metal, buildings collapse around them, the floor shakes, devastation is rife, and not, and not once you pull from the disbelief. Um, this combined with eyes, uh, with Bay's eye for action, so in all the above weaknesses in the script to, to uh, far out eye-opening extravaganza that has you struggling to remember struggling to re remember to breathe man that's some hyperbole isn't it? <laughs> wow <laughs> you love that movie Simon. you really love I that movie. Movie. well i actually went to see it i went to see it at the cinema um with my kids down in um oh crikey where was it bex hill i think when i when i saw a caravan down there and i took my kids to sit and they were bouncing around they absolutely adored it um and, I, and obviously i um seemed to be getting Seem to be getting, uh, seem to be getting on with it. You seem, you seem great. Yeah, it's oh. it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, like for nostalgia purposes, and and I think beyond that, you're you're going to struggle to say. I don't know. I'm maybe I'm a con being contentious and being a bit of a a moaning git, but you're going to struggle to say that it is a great movie but is a good for what type of movie it is i think yeah you you kind of know what you're getting um yeah um particularly in that film um and, and as a as a first entry to the franchise obviously i liked it then i haven't seen it for a long long time um but it, it's kind of been um it's lost kind of it, it's it's uh energy because of the the subsequent releases you know each each of the yeah. sequels um excluding bumblebee them. is they they're rubbish they are really rubbish and they, they just get worse and worse and worse genuinely boring yeah like some yeah. of them and which is just not what you want from a cgi extravaganza is it absolutely like, um, I mean, and going back to that cg though it, it staggers me how none of those films have won you know any major awards for their effects because say what you like about it. i agree with you totally sam the special effects are absolutely brilliant in those yeah you know, they are there Though those, those things are there, like exactly as you wrote all those years ago, Sam. You know, you don't ever doubt that they're not there. You know, and, it, and it's infrequent that you get that kind of, you know, heft and weight to it, and it just staggers me. I mean, it doesn't really because everyone hates Bay, but you know, still, <laughs> the, the, the yeah. technical I mean, achievement of those alone should have gone should have gone rewarded. I think. I think. I, yeah. There's there's definitely there's two there's two separate discussions, isn't there? There's like 
technical achievement and yeah, as yeah, yeah. Faison in the chat says like CGI expertise which you cannot really deny that mm. that is there but how much you how much of your enjoyment relies on just that is is going to depend on the kind of person you are you can um, imagine the, all the the academy voters marveling at the number of pixels on those robot testicles <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah I, Forget I asked that question. I can easily see now why those things have been e easily overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Transformers is a good pick, I think. So, I, like you say, it's, it's it's come back into it's come back into vogue with Bumblebee. They yeah. they've rescued the franchise a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's a a solid pick. Um, I have others. I, I I am yes. We will we'll get onto those. I promise. We'll. Um, Mine is also kind of a cheat. It's not really a specific toy, and it's not a board game, but it is a tabletop game. Uh, my my film of choice is Dungeons and Dragons mm. from the year two thousand. It this movie, ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest, gentlemen, this movie <laughs> is unbelievable. If you have not seen it, it is one of the great bad movies, without yeah. a doubt. It, it yeah. is I would agree with that. enjoyment for a solid 90 minutes, even though not a thing that happens, not a thing that is said, makes a lick of sense. It is a, awesome. Um, just to recommend it to people who ha maybe haven't seen it. And if you haven't seen it, by the way, if you want to see it, you're going to have to buy it on DVD. DVD. <laughs> because is it streaming anywhere? It is not. Is it on Blu-ray? It is not, except as an extra on the US Blu-ray release of the direct-to-TV sequel for some reason. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, here's what you can expect from Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons, right? It's full of Easter eggs if you're a D&D &D enthusiast. Yeah. Read nerd. Yeah. It's got Jimmy Olsen from 1990s TV Superman. It has got Richard O'Brien playing a thief lord who owns a maze of puzzles that you have to beat in order to win a crystal. It has Tom, Tom Baker as a magic doctor. Jeremy Irons has never been hammier than in this movie. Bad jokes, terrible CGI. Marlon Wayans, a sort of dwarf guy who is actually like five foot ten. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, seek it out because it is just 90 minutes of absolute trash starring people you loved as a child it is perfection um it, it's sad it's a funny film i gotta be honest i um i remember <laughs> again so i when when you put that up i thought oh that's brilliant what a great call that is i reviewed that film not for this site for a previous site on dvd mm -hmm. at the time um and i and i remember what strikes me is thinking about the extras on the disc because they interview uh, the, the makers, the director and the writer and that, and they are exactly who you would think they'd be. Proper D&D, &D, geeks, nerds, dweebs, whatever, whatever your the term you want to use. They, they, they love the scene so much and they wanted to put their love into the film. And yeah. credit to them, they've done that. They've done exactly that. Yeah. The trouble is, if you're not in that, that inner circle, you, you kind of left a little bit on the outside. So that's why there's so much in there. But if you're not into Dungeons and Dragons, the, the real Dungeons and Dragons, then you don't really yeah, get it's true. what they were trying to do. It's true. Yeah. There, there are it, it is really built upon people just saying D and D things rather than <laughs> an actual story. An actual story yeah, and it, uh, meaning, yeah. And yeah. and you can you know go through it going you know oh look a mimic oh look a beholder it's it's if you're a nerd that is if you are a nerd who is God how old was I then sixteen years old it is I deal <laughs> I've just given the game away haven't I <laughs> it's, it's got um, we were even old enough to see that film <laughs> it was it was my first ever. DVD purchase. So um, if I am fired go. now, Stu, let me know. Because Imagine I... the career you could have had if you'd bought a decent film first. 
I had that. I got that. And then I got uh, Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. And oh. then I got The Matrix. Those were my first three DVDs. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, so I, I was a child of excellent taste. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, from Faison in the chat, he's also said that it's the same with the, the Warcraft movie, the, the Duncan Jones Warcraft movie. Yeah, yeah. If you've not played the game, it, it is just nonsense fantasy. It is yeah. just people saying fantasy things um, with no like key to whatever is meant to be happening in the plot. Um, and that is true. I did play a little bit of World of Warcraft when I was when I was younger. So I got some some of that stuff, but so much of it is just like deep lore that it, it's impenetrable to. Yeah. And that's probably one of the reasons why it was such a such a flop. And the same for Dungeons and Dragons, although that was also a flop because it was a terrible film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you don't have the references, then you've got nothing. You've got no hope. You've got no chance yeah. of survival. And like, make your time it is not going to happen. Um, so those those are our picks. We want to hear your picks. If you're tuning in live, um, please into the chat put put your your favorite toy based movies or if you are listening later hop onto the forums and go to the the podcast thread and put in there what you think is a good toy movie i'm just going to flick over briefly to the um the podcast thread that was put up just a few days ago um not the official podcast thread the podcast discussion thread and we had people talking about all sorts of things in there. We had mention of, and my background is sort of useful for this, Masters of the Universe, the 1980s, I believe it was a canon movie. Yeah, it's the one that yeah. um, turned them bankrupt. Yeah, it was their last legs. This was yeah. their last hope. Uh, Mark, you watched it today, right? I did. What well, can I say? I'm a pro. Uh <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, you, you know, I I get the budget constraints and lack of CG, you know, were, were what they were back in the late 80s. So, you know, you want to set it on Earth? All right, I, you know, I'm fine with that. You know, I, some of the character redesigns, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm super here for, you know, Frank Langella as Skeletor, Meg Foster as Evil Lynn, and even Dolph Lundgren didn't, didn't do too badly, Or although who thought Karg was, was going to, look cool as a liver spotted aged hair metaler is it can be on me you know so, so i get that there's all those kind of constraints on it but what's disappointing is that they took all that and still made the worst version of that that they possibly could you know hey let's set the action on earth let's put it all in dark alleyways and in a high school i mean the one scene where he-man gets out of a pink cadillac when you were there with your he-man toys did you ever go oi or you get your sister around, you know, because it was back in the day, boys didn't play with those kind of things. Borrow a pink, uh, you know, a Cindy or a Barbie car and have He-Man getting out of it. I oh, mean, I I know. may have done similar things to that. I, I... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not talking about yesterday, Tom. I'm talking about back in the day. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it's it is what it is. It's not the He-Man we wanted. It's certainly not not the He-Man anybody wanted, I think. But you know, there is a camp charm to it, and, and and I'm okay with it. I made peace with it. It's also the moral of that. The moral of that story is that you can save the world if you know how to play the synthesizer, which is a message that I am fully behind, one hundred percent. I mean, how many how many fancy films have an intergalactic guitar as its as its central plot thread? It's it's brilliant. Has, have any of you guys seen the documentary on Netflix, The Power of Grayskull? No, that sounds great. Oh. A definitive history of He-Man. So it covers everything, the toy line, and there's a massive chunk about the film in it. It's well worth watching. It's on Netflix at the moment. Okay. I, think it, I think it leaves Netflix at the end of August. But yeah, The Power of Grayskull, brilliant documentary about He-Man. That sounds good because I watched the the episode of The Toys That Made Us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know about you guys, but I have no time whatsoever for a show that is like, Remember Man at Arms, ah ha ha ha. Remember Merman, ah ha ha. Remember Evil Lynn. Like that's like the tone of every single that made us documentary that is on there, and I struggle to get through them. <laughs> like, yes, I remember those things too. Thanks. 
that is all. <laughs> I can't I can't be dealing with it. Um yeah, I, that sounds that sounds great. Check I, it out. I will definitely have a look into that because I I do have a bit of a soft spot for He-Man. As anybody who read my thread on Masters of the Universe will probably be able to guess. That what was... score did you give that? Oh, um <laughs> four? A numerical score, please. <laughs> I um I I gave it a B plus. <laughs> I I had a blast with it. I thought it was super fun, super fun. I really it's, it's really interesting because it the, too. the the internet at large seems to um not like it very much. The internet at large can do one. It is brilliant. <laughs> they just don't like Kevin Smith. That's what it is. Yeah, it could be. They've all taken about the mis-selling of it. Yeah, it is. Kevin yeah, Smith yeah. promised us this. Kevin Smith promised us that. Since when would you trust Kevin Smith at all? <laughs> Have you not seen Clarks? <laughs> like, oh, I, God. I'm not even a I'm not even really a Kevin Smith guy. Like I, I like Clarks. And I like a couple of his other movies, but I'm not really a Kevin Smith guy, which is why I was sort of watching it expecting to be like, ah, oh, geez. But it was not. It was okay. It was it was better than okay. It, it was it was a nice little like trip down memory lane, as well right. as just a cool bit of like super well animated, super well animated awesome. fantasy storytelling. Um and that's more to come. Yeah, with with we're only halfway there. Mm-hmm. We're only halfway there. So if you if you think you know what's going on, I guess hold your horses until we see the rest of it. A really, really blindingly good recommendations there from everyone. Um, and in the chat, we've had a few more. So I'm just going to have a quick look. Um, we've had mentions of... Now, this is one that I'm surprised that nobody brought up in their main pick. The Lego movies. It was, uh, yeah, it was my second choice. Yeah. The reason I didn't go with it was because it was animated and we were kind of erring on the on the live action side. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if you are going to pick the, you know, the best um, movie based off a toy, then I don't think you can go much better than the first Lego, the second Lego, or Lego Batman. Indeed, they are equally as good as each other. They are brilliant, aren't they? And the... the um... The scores to them, I say the scores, the, the soundtracks to them as well, <laughs> are just so on point. They are so good. Yeah. I think the first one, there was some um, collaboration between Beck and the Lonely Island, which is just such a nuts collaboration. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Lonely Island, go and YouTube them as soon as the podcast is over. You will not be disappointed. Um, and to to get them in for a, a kids movie is absolutely insane mm-hmm. but it works the the music that is in especially the first one and the lego batman movie the the opening number for lego batman is is in creds a will arnett is the mvp of that entire franchise <laughs> i'm sorry he's just oh it's brilliant he's uh yeah he's He's got more coming as well. I think that uh, I do believe there is a second Lego Batman movie in development. So uh, more to come, hopefully. Has anybody got any other any other that they wanted to mention? I mean, I could launch uh, an impassioned defense of Battleship if you're would, really desperate. I would love to hear somebody say that Battleship is good and and to hear somebody be that wrong in my life. I would I would enjoy that. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean, for, for a film that starts with, you know, l- let's be honest, our, our chums across the Atlantic's interpretation of a football tournament, uh, which in itself is 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 a work of comedy genius. And, you know, yes, aliens land, and yes, Rihanna is our front line of defence, apparently. Uh, you know, so so yes, there is a certain degree of awfulness to it. But come on, let's be honest. When when that when that ancient battleship is being manned by those old timers, thank you for your service, to the tune of Thunderstruck. You know, hell, it makes me want to stand up and sing the Star Spangled Banner for God's sake. That's so, not that's not an impassioned defense of, of course it battleship. Is. What, that's what an impassioned defense of Thunderstruck. <laughs> Damn it. 
<laughs> you put Thunderstruck to the soundtrack of anything, and yeah, it's that is true. hardcore. Put Thunderstruck in Lego Batman, and it's oh my god, that's it. We're away for sure. Uh, yeah, it's. I actually quite like that battleship. I think it's quite a good film. It's it's Michael Bay without Michael Bay. You know, without that, robot that testicles. Makes it a good film. Yeah, oh, it, without all that, you know, mental stuff he puts in, all the cheese and all the schmaltz and all that. It's. Uh, I feel like I'm like taking it. crazy pills. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I struggled to get through that movie. <laughs> it took it took uh, a couple of beers, definitely, and a break. <laughs> well, to be fair, it takes it takes that to get me through Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Who have we hired? This is a this is all wrong. Uh, so ah. yeah. So the, the what is, about go what on. about toys that would make good would would make good films? Mm. Toys that, that, that are harder. around or have been around that should make a good film. Hungry hippos. Make a good film. Hungry hippos as a blood drenched creature feature. Man, <laughs> you have sold me. I, you, I am there. I am That's there, it. sat in the front row for this movie. Hungry I hippos. Hope you give me a call. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think maybe Arrow is a bit of market. I think maybe we want like full moon video for this one. <laughs> Char- Charlie Band. Char- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I am I am in it for that. If we can have if we can have a killer sofa movie, we can definitely have hungry hippos. Very true. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I I can't think. I feel jaded. I feel like I don't I can't think of a single like toy movies do not work. We mentioned like the Lego movie and that is like an aberration. Because for the rest of them I like it's a stretch, but, isn't it? It's it really stretch. is. Like yeah. Transformers is good, the first one, or ah, good. It's enjoyable, but it's based on like hundreds of hours of not just the toys, but the cartoons exactly. as well. It had it had a jumping off point from the TV mm. shows. Yeah, absolutely. I well, think if you it, go on, I was, I was just going to say, you know, is, isn't that the part of the problem with with the toys? You know, the fact is that if they're not coming from any other form of, you know, IP or anything, they are just a toy. Your reference point for the movie then is those hundreds of hours that you played with them, and frankly, the, the situations you were coming up with, the crazy, you know, the way that you played with them. No, no marketing exec in Hollywood is ever going to be able to come up with anything that's remotely as interesting as your your experience with them so i think i think you're right i think i think most of them are on a hard into nothing really aren't they yeah it's 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 difficult for it to be anything other than than dead on arrival i think um which is a shame which is a shame because all of these things come from a place of like pure nostalgia the fun you had like you say mark the fun you had making up adventures for your action figures when you were a kid. And it, it's just an unattainable bar. Even, even if, right, we were to get a film that was exactly like one of the dumbass stories that I came up with when I was six years old with my, you know, Transformers, that would be a terrible film. No one would want to see that. It would, that would appeal to exactly one person, you know? It's, it's, so, so you're on to a loser already because they have this backing of pure imagination that is not replicable on the big screen. It just isn't. It's baffling when to take battleships. You know, I know they'll go, well, it's, it's brand recognition. Really? In 2012, there's some, there's some marketing forum somewhere that go, my word, all, all these small children keep mentioning this ancient game about paintings. <laughs> oh, we must capitalise on this. I mean, <laughs> y- we keep hearing this, don't we, getting wheeled out. It's brand recognition. Really? Is it though? It's also a cheap idea. Yeah. That's that's what's ah. so appealing. Yeah, uh, and that's, again, this is probably a conversation for another podcast, but we could we could talk about things that are cheap ideas for movies. You know, the... The world of soft reboots, the world of uh, 
uh, you know, hungry hippos. <laughs> the world of hungry hippos. <laughs> if only there weren't so many goddamn hungry hippos movies, we might be able to get an indie flick in now and then. <laughs> but it's true. It's it's an easy. It's an as mm. far as a marketing team is concerned, it is an easy win. They just go this, but a movie, and and their work is done, and they get paid. And then it's up to some poor screenwriter and some poor journeyman director to try and make it look like just not a shit on a page, you know? <laughs> and even worse, you then find that because, you know, the leading times that it takes to get these things more often than not, the films are then released at a time when the, the toy cycle is actually finished. You know, and yeah. then, and the, the, you know, the kids have stopped playing with it and moved on. Oh, now we've got a film of that thing we, we stopped playing with two years ago. Yeah, case in point for that being the Bratz movie. Like, uh, I I want to say that the oh, Bratz yeah. movie was released within the last maybe three or four years. Um, and is a brand that was popular like 20 years ago, for sure. For sure, it was like 20 years ago. And, and suddenly they came out with this like live action adaptation of it. And you think, who is clamoring for this? Who is this for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that think, was bizarre, wasn't it? I think that's that's a that's an argument that I like to level against movies is is to ask who is it for. But I think it's a legitimate question most of the time. And and if only the producers would ask themselves that question <laughs> once in a while, we might not get so much of this dreck. Yeah. Well, then again, we might. I don't know what the what the heck do I know. <laughs> So um, Faison says TMNT, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they were a cartoon before they were a toy. They so, were a comic so book comic before book. they were a cartoon. Yeah. 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 So uh, th that's why we discounted them straight away. Yeah, Laird and Eastman's comic. Again, there is a, an amazing documentary about this, um, and I can't remember where I saw it, but it may have been Amazon, um, about Laird and Eastman about, and about how they essentially gleefully sold out or one of them did i should say i shouldn't i shouldn't paint them both in the same brush but gleefully just said yeah this this indie super violent weird comic that we've made is now going to be a multi-million dollar franchise with people in suits dressing up and pretending to eat pizza it's 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 nuts yeah i can't remember what it's called so i can't recommend it to you but go I and dream you know. of selling out like that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Yeah, if, if somebody is if somebody is willing to offer me tens of thousands, millions of dollars for a really dumb idea I had when I was a teenager, man, the they, they, rights they, for Captain Cactus are on the board. I, I was going to say, if you want to turn Hungry Hippos from the violent 18 rated horror film into a range of plushies for school kids, <laughs> give me a call. There's also <laughs> um, a suggestion on the chat of what about Hot Wheels? Fear not. Hot Wheels, the movie is coming. What about a Dungeons and Dragons reboot? Fear not. A Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> reboot is coming based on the 80s cartoon rather oh, than yeah. Yeah. Okay. A live action adaptation of Tell me Uni's gonna be in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it'll be passable, but likely it will be god awful because yeah. that is the way of things. Um so do we do we have any parting thoughts about this this endeavor of turning toys into movies? Do we do we just stop? Should we just stop? It's, well, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because normally it's done the other way around. It's normally you get the film and then the toys come out. So so to go the other way around, you're you're on a hiding to nothing for everything we've we've been talking about. Um, the uh, as you say, the Lego one is an aberration because I mean you can't make a film about a little bit of Lego. It's uh, an entire thing, isn't it? It's, it's the, the world building that comes through the Lego, which is why they work quite so well. Um, Twister, that might be a good one. <laughs> well, I, I think the toy market's just moved on now, hasn't it? I mean, you, yeah. you, I, I'm an 11 year old, so I regularly get dragged to Smith's, you know, toy stores and and. Everything on the shelves now that, that would equate to the kind of toy that I had, you know, back when I were a lad, it, it's all based on movies. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so now it's all your Avengers and your DC and all that and yeah. or some wrestling toys or something like that, you know. Uh, so so I just think the entire toy market has shifted now. And I, and I pray to God we don't get any 
films based on what passes for board games these days. I mean, half the board games on the shelves at Smith's, I've got poo in the title, for goodness sake, you know. <laughs> so, so, so I really hope to God we don't get many of them. That's a whole different to... genre, that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially I've, got a, I've, got a few, I've got a few board games that I'd, I'd see turned into movies, for sure. I've, there's the, the HP Lovecraft board game, Arkham Horror, which is, uh, if you've not played it, absolutely brilliant. It takes about six hours to play, and it requires like six to eight people to play it. And it is intense. It's great. You can go insane. You can end up in the hospital. You can get lynched. It is a good board game. I um, is, is all that in the game or after? <laughs> First in the game, then after. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i th yeah. i think we're just we're just know. a bit we don't we are we are immune to marketing marketing guys just stop it no no one wants it okay um i'm hoping that you guys have had a, a chance to look through um andy's lists each month andy bassett publishes lists on the website of everything that is coming to the various streaming services each month um and it's up to us usually to, to take a look at those and see if we can find something to recommend for you guys to keep an eye out for so let's move on swiftly to our section entitled coming soon if you'd like to support the AV Forums podcast on a regular basis, then why not become a patron? Head over to patreon.com forward slash AV Forums to sign up. You can also make a one-off donation through the Super Chat or via streamlabs.com forward slash AV Forums. All donations help us to improve the website and the podcasts. Thank you to all our supporters. So... Has anybody got any recommendations that they would like to share with our beautiful listening audience? Simon, anything coming up this month that you've got your eye on? Well, um, in, in, in a word, not really. Um, although that was two words. Although one thing did uh, not really. pique, pique my interest, um, but not um, because... Uh, well, the, the reason I, I'm, I'm going to pick this is because um, Chris and I interviewed the director of this film for AV Forums uh, a long, long, long time ago, before it was released, actually, and that's Solomon Kane. Oh, that's um, huge fun. It's a fantastic film, um, and I've got a massive soft spot for it because um, we actually went round to, to Stuart's house and watched it in his home, at home cinema um, before um, MJ came down, and we, uh, we had a good old... Uh, and we had a beer with him for lunch, and then we had a, sat down and um, filmed the interview with him. Um, so that, for me, makes the film worth watching because I have that, um, you know, personal uh, affection with it. Um, but that, where's that coming that, to um, I actually think it's quite a good film. It's on Netflix. And I think it came out two days ago, three days ago. I think it came out on the first. It's, it's, it's great fun, you know. I would, yeah, I would recommend it too. That is... Um... That's like, uh, I would say that's MJ Bassett's best movie. So I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Well, yeah, certainly not. Yeah. yeah. So, since we, then, things haven't been quite the, so good. The site, well, I mean, we've got, a, we've got a bit of a dedication to her. So like, we've been, we've been pretty consistent in, in yeah. reviewing and talking about her movies. So um, yeah, it, it's it, Solomon Kane definitely up Absolutely. there. Absolutely, it's, a, it's a, a good fun movie for sure. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't do anything you know extraordinary. Um, it's you know fairly fairly. It's it's just great really fun, you know, really mm -hmm. great fun. And the chat we had with him was with her was was brilliant. It was great fun, and yeah, you can probably still find them. Probably still find them on YouTube actually. Awesome. Yeah, and and a close personal friend of the website being. Andy, who puts our lists together of what's coming on, is uh, the brother of MJ Bassett, who directed Solomon Kane. So we, oh, yeah. we should probably just divulge our, <laughs> our connection there. But um, regardless, it is a, a super fun movie. Uh, Mark, what about you? Uh, I, I have to admit, I don't watch a lot on the streaming services other than the movies. But the one thing that caught my eye on Netflix, it, it, I think it dropped a couple of days ago as well. Young Guns 2. 
Oh, oh get off. man. Oh, yeah, man. You're going to go down in a blaze of glory. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's, you know, it's awful in so many ways, but it pushes that nostalgia button. Something rotten. I guess, I guess so. The 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 brat pack we shall never see their like again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For better or worse. Yeah, um, <laughs> definitely worse. <laughs> no, I, I I kid, I kid. Yes, absolutely. Um I I quite like to recommend some good things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> No, Young Guns is fun. Uh, Young Guns 2 is also a movie. Um, <laughs> coming up on Amazon um, this month, do you know what? I haven't got the date in front of me, but it is this month, is the Val Kilmer documentary uh, chronicling all of his time that he spent filmmaking, like even pre-acting, he was interested in filmmaking. And so this is uh, a documentary about his life using footage that he has filmed since uh, from a young age so it looks absolutely absolutely fascinating if you have any interest at all in in Val Kilmer's work which you definitely should like yeah. this is Iceman that we're talking about you know he's this I is Jim Morrison like this it is would be uh, very very interesting to hear his take on the island of Dr Monroe <clears throat> oh man yeah that I definite guilty pleasure there because yeah. uh but yeah for sure it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say on it but also coming out this month um a personal I, i'm really quite excited for i have no love for musicals in general i am not a musicals guy i think that's okay to be not a musicals person however 20th of august amazon annette it is a musical by Sparks. And if you are, if you know who Sparks are from the, I was going to say from the 70s and 80s, they've been making music this whole time. And it has remained excellent this whole time. But they have um, penned the score to this musical um, starring Adam Driver. And it's coming out on Amazon on the, the 20th of August. And I am really, as a huge Sparks fan, there's this. There is also the Edgar Wright documentary about Sparks called yeah. The Sparks Brothers, which is also out this month. As a Sparks fan, it is, it's a good time to be alive, for sure. I'm really looking forward to that. Okay. Anything else, you guys? No. Yeah. Stunned silence. That's man. it. That, do you know what? That really is it. And we have been going for exactly 57 minutes. We are on time can you believe it Unbelievable. <laughs> we've got just enough time for our podcast competition so if you head over to the website you can enter our exclusive competition the question is who does tom hanks voice in toy story 3 okay if you can answer that question, then you can be in with the chance of winning Toy Story 3 on 4K, the best Toy Story movie, uh, Fight Me. That is, I think, it for the AV Forums Movies podcast this week. My thanks go to Mark Costello. To Luke. And Simon Crust. Read the words, don't look at the numbers. Please, please stop looking at the numbers. Give me a break. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to the channel. You can hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we publish our live streams, product reviews, etc., etc. Or if you are listening to us uh, not live, then whichever app you use to listen to podcasts, please rate us the highest rating available. If you're not going to do that, don't do it at all because it's just not worth it. Just, just give us just give us five stars or 10 stars, whichever it is. Just, you know, follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, bookmark the website. That's pretty much it. I have been Tom Davis. Thank you ever so much for joining us. And we will see you for the weekly podcast next week. And that is all from me. And good night. Bye.